In this video, we have some equations to solve, some nice algebraic equations. So starting with this one, we have 28x to the third minus 24x squared plus 21x minus 18 equals zero. Now you've noticed that this is a polynomial equation, so you don't have any weird stuff like um, absolute values or uh, fractions or radicals. It's just a nice polynomial equation. And everything is already on the same side of the equation, zeros on the other side. So this means that maybe we should think about factoring. And I think that's a great idea. You have four terms, so it only seems to make sense that we should try to factor by grouping. So in the first group, you'll see that there is a common factor of four x squared, and that would leave us with seven x minus six. In the second group, we lead off with a plus and the common factor for 21x and 18 is three. So we're going to divide or factor that out and we get seven X minus six, just like we did from the first group. Now this is good for us. Okay. We want these groups to be exactly the same so that we can finish factoring by grouping. And so now seven X minus six is the common factor times 4x squared plus 3. And now that this is factored, we can use the zero factor theorem. So we're going to take each factor and set it equal to zero. So 7x minus 6 is equal to zero. Or 4x squared plus 3 is equal to zero. So we take these guys one at a time and we solve them. So for seven X minus six equals zero, that means seven X is equal to six. And then you can divide both sides by seven and we get six over seven. And then here for the four X squared plus three equals zero, you see that you have X squared. So you need to get that guy by itself. So we subtract the three and then we divide both sides by four to get negative three fourths. So you have the square by itself. And remember to undo the square, we need to use the square root property. So take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. So X is equal to plus or minus. Now keep this in mind. This radical can be rewritten as the square root of negative three over the square root of four. So think about that so they can help you simplify this expression. So in the numerator, all you can do is take out that negative as an I, so this becomes I times the square root of three and the square root of four is two. So when you look at the original equation, you have a degree of three. So we're supposed to have three solutions. You have one real solution here. And then we have two complex solutions there. So we have a total of three solutions in this problem. All right, let's see this next one. In the next one, we have 2x squared plus 28x plus 58 equals zero. Classic quadratic equation. Now, before you just try to throw everything into the quadratic formula, let's go through our progression to see what will work and what won't. So the first thing you would try to see is can you use the square root property? Well, since you have x squared and x, this is not going to work for us. Maybe we try to factor. Um, the one thing we can do is that we see that there is a common factor of two. Um, if we factor that out, we'll have 14 x here, we'll have 29 here, but you can't find factors of 49 or 29 that give you 14. So Factoring is not going to work. What about completing the square? Well, with completing the square, you need this coefficient here to be a one. If it's not, can you easily get it to be a one? And we can. So for completing the square, we will have to get that to be just a one X squared. But before we do that, we need to move the constant to the other side like this. 
And now we're going to take this lead coefficient and divide all terms by that. Because again, for completing the square, you want this to start off with a positive 1 for the coefficient. So x squared plus 14x, mind the gap, equals negative 29. And now this is where completing the square actually gets going, where it starts to get good. So you've got a 1 here, and this guy's even. So perfect setup for completing the square. We are trying to find... We are trying to find a number that goes in the gap right here so that when I have this trinomial, it factors with the exact same two factors. Now, you could kind of guess and check your way there, but an easier way is knowing where you're going. So take this 14 and divide it by 2, and that gives you 7. So 7 is going to be in the factored form because what's here is this number squared. So that's plus 49. So to figure out this number, you take this middle coefficient, divide by 2, and square it. So if you look at a lot of textbooks, they would say, get the 49 and then factor. Well, you know how it's going to factor anyway. So I say, go ahead and write the factorization so that when you do that middle step of dividing by 2, you complete the factorization, and then you can put that square up here that tells you how you actually completed that square. Now, if I add 49 on the left side, that changes the problem, unless I also add 49 on the right side. So now things stay balanced. I needed the 49 here so that I could factor this a very particular way. I needed 49 on the right side so that things could stay true. So negative 29 and 49 is 20. And now we have a situation where we can use the square root property. That's the whole point of completing the square is to manipulate so that you can use the square root property. So I'm going to take the square root of the left side, the square root of the right side. Don't forget your plus or minus. All right, so we have x plus 7 is equal to plus or minus. Now pay attention. You want to look at the 20 and see if there are factors that are perfect squares. So you split up 20 to be 4 times 5, keeping in mind that each of these is inside of a square root. The square root of 4 gives you 2, but the square root of 5 has to stay as it is. So we end up with plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. One last step is to move the 7 to the other side to completely isolate the variable. So x equals negative 7 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. Now, I'm going to go ahead and box this, because even if I were to separate and say one with the plus and one with the minus, there's not anything extra that you can do. So we can keep it as this nice condensed plus or minus form. 